So uh, for anyone who is still here after the main episode, like keeping the fact that this is now two days later, welcome to the half pint. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> So, uh, what do you think about Laura Kampf's uh, revamping of her uh, channel to going back to the basics? Ah, oh. a fresh start in a new country. I don't country. think she has. I don't think she's gone back to basics. I've recently been watching Laura's uh, videos from eight years ago when she first started, and they still seem very, very different to what she's morphing into now. <laughs> yeah, I mean she talks more to the camera but still it's it's just her in the workshop doing yeah one project thing so i think that's uh, different at least yeah i like it i was a bit bored of the house to be honest with you yeah i <laughs> <laughs> i'm divided i mean i i love it and i love the direction and i love all the quirky bits that she makes and all right i'm gonna do this now and then i'm gonna have a like a display or art gallery at the end. I, I love that. I love art galleries and her stuff. I mean, I would really go and see that. And the sad part is, I mean, I don't miss the house, but I miss Felix because the dynamic between her and him as the camera guy, and as he's just as much in front of the camera as he, as he is behind, you're going to lose that. So I'm a bit sad about that, of course, but... Uh, and yes, her uh, German workshop, because uh, the new workshop, it needs a few years to get into that same <laughs> aroma yeah. atmosphere as her German workshop. Scrap heap. Yeah, because the new one is like, <laughs> all right, I call up this company and uh, can you suggest a, a package for me? And then they rolled in a lot of brand new and a lot of woodworking equipment. And yeah, I miss the fact when she in the video just like, I want to build a lamp. Let me see. And then she just walks for hours back in the workshop on the premises yeah. and start pulling things out. I know I had something here a few years ago and start just, <laughs> oh, here it is. And it's some piece of aluminum or something. And yeah, but I'm all up for it. It's, it's like not niching now. And then I do a lot of random things and it's like, yeah. Just do what you want to do because that's why I follow her in the first place because she has niched down and become boring and uh, just selling uh, Gatorade and uh, NordVPN and that uh, tank world of tank games or, or something <laughs> like that. I mean, a lot of people are doing that. So I, it's, it's nice to see someone that like, I'll do what I want to do. Do you know yeah. what I really appreciate with her channel is the ad placement right at the very end. Yeah, so it's easy to see. <laughs> <laughs> we all we all understand you have to have the adverts that's great yeah. but it's so nice it being at the end <laughs> exactly yeah. gives you a chance to write a comment and like and, <laughs> and still have it playing so if she gets the support i think it's great <laughs> yeah. yeah that she manages to actually get the uh, the companies to agree to that that's i mean that's it's great more should do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> then again of course I know why she does it, and of course, I'm very glad she does, so I can just skip it. But yeah, if I want her to push my company or my product, it's like, oh, you're going to put it at the end. How much do you want me to pay you, said? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> How would you two um, get on with product placement and adverts, do you think? Would you, would you do them? If it's something relevant, I mean, like yeah. uh, uh, send, send tool, send or, uh, or PCB way or something like that, when it's actually yeah. uh, suitable, or I mean, free tool. If it's a, if it is a tool that's actually nice and that's usable, then I mean, then it would be fine to incorporate it. I guess well, it's... It, would, it would be stressful for me to actually get it done. <laughs> but yeah, it will be a very theoretical question. <laughs> at least at Definitely. this point but yeah i mean 
at least Not at least now I, I can <laughs> afford to buy the tools that I want. Also because the limiting size of my workshop, uh, I can't really go overboard. Uh, so the hassle of getting free hand tools and having to implement that in a video, it doesn't feel worth it. Um, so free tools, no. And of course, if someone would like to pay me money, then if I were at the threshold where I could actually live out of doing YouTube, then of course it's <laughs> it's a necessity to get an income going, but <laughs> not now. So it should be then a company that I'm already using or that I like, and it would need to be something that you can integrate. I don't to cut up the flow of the video just to plug something. I hate that. So I don't want to do that. And then yeah. something that I don't believe in or don't use. No, because I hate other people who do that. It feels fraudulent. So it, it should need something that it should be something that I use and that I can implement into the video. So then I would have needed to be approached and then they would say, we give you full creative freedom and you also have a free timeline to when you implement it. Because in any creative work, it kind of comes to you when you're doing different things. So I remember my high school teacher said, you, you should, I did a, a, what was it? A poem analysis for a, for a test. And he said, but that's not you. I mean, you're good at writing funny anecdote and there was a task there, write a funny anecdote. Why didn't you pick that one? Because I can't relate to that topic. I have never done that before, so I don't know how to write that in a comedic style. And it's, it's a bit when you're making a video, you have your project, it comes to you and it starts to mature and you think, all right, that would be fun. And okay, then I can do this and then you can do that. And if someone presents you something, we need you to make a video about uh, wood chippers uh, within the next week. Then you just paralyze it like, uh, wood chippers, what's that? I don't need it now. What should I do with it? And you just, the re end result would be crap. I'm just saying right now that if you got a free wood chipper <laughs> to make a video with, it would be fantastic. Yeah. Probably uh, take more than a week to do that video, though. Yeah, and then the question is, Just I mean, what do they chip, want man. out of it? Because yeah. do you want a Fargo reenactment? Do you want it as a durability <laughs> test? Then I'm all aboard, and of course, that, then I chip? then I need two <laughs> because I want one that I can keep and use. But then is the one that I'm going to sacrifice for the video because if I'm making a wood chopping video i'm going to chuck everything in it i mean car tires uh, uh spray cans uh, <laughs> rebar anything <laughs> i'm just envisioning me doing that video and just starting off uh pushing down one of my mannequins into it just me standing there <laughs> holding the legs pushing into the wood chipper uh, that would be great all actually. right so um <laughs> This took a t this this took a turn. <laughs> so if there's a <laughs> if there's a wood chipper company out there who needs a, a video made, uh, we are at least two three guys here who can do a collab and make a video for you. We might even I do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably actually make it relevant to the actual wood chipper as well. Yeah, you would be our alibi in the yeah. in the real world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the real world, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be cool because then you could have a parallel. But I mean, then obviously they would also have to budget in uh, paying for uh, sending us over to England so we can do the call up there, and yeah, <laughs> then back in Norway, and you have to try it in snow and so on because the, the wood chipping season in Norway is completely different from uh, Nottinghamshire or Lincolnshire or yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I asked about the whole tool thing is because you both know I received a, a free tool recently. A yes, drill. you did. Not that I needed a new drill. I just wanted something free for a change. <laughs> <laughs> um, in return, I said I would show it in my content, which I did. But the funny part is that um, I received the drill halfway through shooting my video and had to go back and shoot 
two scenes with um, with the new drill that I'd previously shot with my regular one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it looked flawlessly. Which... I, I didn't. Uh, I, I saw the drill and know that yeah. it talked about it, so I knew that, but it didn't look yeah. out of place. Well, it was the um, it was the part where I'm just about to cut the fire extinguisher in half, and I'm screwing the box down. So if you look in that for that scene, my t-shirt's a different color. Not that you see ever seen it <laughs> in that video anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and also, the box that I put the fire extinguisher has already got the slip cut in it. <laughs> Ah, okay, yeah, I didn't notice that. So. <laughs> but it was a, it was a real pain in the ass. I got to that point, I thought, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go back in the workshop and uh, refill that. <laughs> but yeah, it was, a, it was a fun experience. Um, but it is, you know, it's, it, it is kind of fun that because when sometimes I see they they make this compilation videos of a movie where they show all inconsistencies and so on and it is I mean yeah if you show it to me then I notice it but once you're watching it if, if it's a good movie if the content is good I mean you don't notice if the 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 color of the shirt changes or the color of the tool oh. or whatever and once you realize that, and I think we talked about it earlier, then it makes the videos much more easier because you don't have to fiddle around for half an hour to make the perfect transition between two clips and make everything line up because you're the only one who's going to notice unless you point it out because people are watching it just for the entertainment and once they watch it, they're going to jump on to the next video. They're not going to all right, I'm going to go back and see, uh, did he screw up something or did he do a costume change or did he uh, have consistency in the, the way he's doing the work? Nobody's doing that. No. <laughs> so how do you feel about the Selling the out. Drill? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always said I'm fine with selling out. Yeah, I haven't got a have, problem with that yet. <laughs> so that's on brand. The drill, um, so... It costs half the less of half the price of my Bosch drill, so it's it is quite a cheap drill, and it is equally as capable, but it wouldn't stand. I don't think it would stand the abuse. It wouldn't stand being dropped because the the plastics just aren't up to the same quality as the Bosch drill. But um, you know, for a drill just under forty quid, it is equally as capable. It's got the same power. It's got the same torque. And it does the job. It drilled through the metal perfectly well. There's no problems with it at all. I, I think that's <coughs> a good thing. Of course, th these tools have been discussed up and down in the WhatsApp group. And of course, I didn't even bother to ask because there there was regions in the UK they didn't send to. So they are, they're not sending to Norway. So I'm not going to be bothered asking. <laughs> but... And it is the same with a lot of tools, at least for me, who is not doing it in a professional sense. But the drop test is real because my drills, they don't get much abuse in the sense of the work they're doing. But I do tend to turn around and knock them over. And uh, yeah, having some proper tools that is actually yeah. both padded and built so they can take a beating, that's, uh, that's probably saved me. At least in the drill department, if I went for a cheaper brand, I would probably have owned four or five drills by now. Spent just yeah. as much money as I did on the one that's been lasting me for years. On the flip side, that the high cheeky drill is going to go to Michelle eventually. <laughs> <laughs> she's 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 got a little toolkit of her own in the that she keeps in the house, and she said it would be great to have a you know. A power tool of my own as well and a drill is one of those things that you do use very often yeah and i think a drill like that is perfect for somebody like michelle where it's going to get you know a light diy use or you know a little bit of making use so i think you know it's okay in that instance and that is a brilliant segue into basically the same topic so it's not a segue um <laughs> <laughs> I saw uh, Felix, uh, the camera guy of Laura Kampf. Uh, he has his own channel. Uh, go check it out uh, and practice your German. Um, he made a small toolkit to bring with you to do small fixes. And if you're on holiday and uh, 
Uh, there has been some makers now in the holiday posting videos. Uh, I'm at the cabin somewhere without my tools, so I need to have small maker projects uh, where I don't have access to my workshop. And that got me thinking. I always... I want a small cabinet or a picture in our living room uh, with a small tool collection behind there because if, if we're hanging up a picture <laughs> or if you're measuring the couch i don't want to go down to my workshop and bring all the large tools up so it's almost like a edc for your living room um and i i saw his video about this he had an old beaten metal box and he just neatly fitted a lot of tools in there and i took a screenshot because a lot of the tools I have and I use, and they are on my list of the tools I want to have in this smaller, um, uh, like a container, tool chest, whatever you call it. And I, I started thinking about it again yesterday when I did the uh, repair on the, um, the dryer because I have a small tool kit with a ratchet and a screwdriver that fits to the bits and so on. And it's... It's a cheap but decent toolkit that I bought several years ago, but I realized that's my go-to. So whenever I'm fixing something small outside my workshop, I can basically get 90% of that done. So I just pick that one with me, and then I, I need like the... Um, the plumbers, pliers, or whatever they're called, I bring one of those and uh, a flashlight, and then I can basically fix anything in the house. And then you need a tape measure and so on. So that's my next project. Well, not maybe next chronologically, but it's moved up on my list and uh, to make that toolbox for the living room. But now I also think I see the contours of what tools I want in there, and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. supply with the rest from uh, Felix's video. <laughs> so are you thinking an actual toolbox that you carry with you or because when you described it it sounded more like where the like a movie where the assassin has all its weapon you push a button and then a, a, a frame opens up and you have a shadow foam with everything lined up neatly and as, as usual you are you are, you are uh, pinpointing the issue <laughs> it's gonna be two project obviously because I, I still want I, I talked about this earlier. I want to make a hollow picture frame. I have a picture of uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Nick Offerman, uh, and of <laughs> oh, course, yeah. then it, it's one. it's the hammer and a screwdriver and some bits for hanging up pictures and a measuring tape. That is basically what you need for your living room. But I also want to make a small portable tool chest with all the bits and bobs that you well, basically, which we just talked about. And then, of course, I can build that box, but then it will be brand spankingly new. But then again, I'm also looking for an old metal case, beat down something uh, yeah. that I can repurpose to get that old aesthetics. Um, that's what Michelle has. Yeah, it's perfect, and she keeps all the maker stickers on it as well, which oh, that just enhances it even more. That's brilliant. And of course, when I, I started going on online marketplaces and looking for these and uh, you, you have to go to some swap meets and you will probably stumble over something. But there is also a company in Norway who are now selling retro 70s, 50s, 60s stationery and so on. And of course, they have all these metal small, they look like toolboxes, but they're basically these old classic... Uh, I think Stanley also have a new version of these, the uh, where you have your thermos and your food in when you're going to the factory. Oh yeah, a lunch yeah. pile. And those would be perfect, but then again, they are pricey because they put retro before it. So now uh, all the hipsters are paying yeah. to have that as the lunch boxes again. Like, oh, I'm gonna pretend to be a factory workers, and the, <laughs> of course now they're ten times the price and. They look brand new, and I don't want to pay that price for something I'm going to hook up to my car and drag it for 200 meters to get the old patina and uh, roughed up feel <laughs> to it. So, <laughs> so I'm still looking around for the the perfect container for that project. Nice. Yeah, I'm trying to get my wife to feel at home in the workshop. Uh, 
so so she doesn't have a, her own tools because the, these tools are supposed to be our tools because then I can get her to pay for half of them. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but I can't uh, believe but you I, just said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> but the kids uh, have their own tools, and I've just recently built them a, uh, a tool wall of their own uh, at a kid's size height as well, hanging from a table. Uh, oh, cool. So they in the house or in the workshop? In the workshop. So just nice. inside the door. So they, I just need to get them to acknowledge that it exists and remember that it exists and wanting to do something with it. But at least now it's here and, and it's not just hidden away somewhere. You have to take a photo of that for the Instagram, KJ. That sounds cool. That can be arranged. I, I mean, yeah. it's a good... I like the idea and I should implement that myself. I should... Uh... As you said, try to make the the wife uh, more comfortable in the workshop, so I can use our uh, joint bank account. <laughs> uh, we need uh, a lathe, uh, <laughs> and then of course, uh, <laughs> then it's only half the price if you use the joint bank account because uh, then of course the the rest exactly. is covered by yeah. Um, but I think early this summer uh, I gave my uh, oldest kid um, a pink. Uh, tool uh, bag, tool case, uh, full of tools. Um, and of course, the, the youngest one, who is now just turned four, she wants the same as her bigger sister. So her uh, grandfather bought her the same kit. So now they have each their own suitcase with pink tools, and they are running around everywhere. Uh, we are fixing the TV, we are fixing the couch. <laughs> and of course, I love it because they although they're not fixing anything, they are getting acquainted with the tools and they learn what they're called. And of course, the oldest one, uh, she's calling it, I mean, it's, it's not my workshop, it's our workshop. And when I grow <laughs> up, I want to have my corner. And so, yeah, I'm planning the same thing. They they should, ha I should make a holder for their toolkit because now it's in their bedrooms and the tools are everywhere. So at some point, when they're old enough and they can go down to the workshop without me being afraid of the dangerous tools when they like reach that threshold where they know that all right i'm not gonna start that one because i need supervision then of course i would like them to feel at home in the workshop and the oldest one feels maybe too much home already because uh, she has on several occasions said uh, when you die we get your tools. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, but uh, don't keep your hopes up because I'm, I'm planning on that to be uh, <laughs> quite the bit down the road. <laughs> oh, you ta you've taken action as well, haven't you, with the uh, old gym? How's that going? Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's not talk. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, One hit I'm still recuperating. Um there is a few years since I've hit the gym. Uh, and of course, one of the reasons is the prolapse in my back. And it it's the last year I have defined myself as, as totally pain-free. So um, I have been dreading this because I don't want to go back too early because then you can just fuck everything up again and set yourself a year or two back. But now I'm where I should go to the workshop. No workshop for, yeah basically the workshop for the body, uh, the gym. Um, so yeah, uh, my wife is uh, frequently attending. So uh, I joined the same place and um, I had my first go in many years and I kept it very slow and I left early so that I feel like I want to go back. I mean, the, the problem is you always overdo it the first time and and still, I've used some muscles I haven't used in a few years. So it took me three or four days uh, before I uh, don't feel my torso in a way I haven't felt in years. And then, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, we need to discuss. Uh, we can't just leave the kids home alone and go to the gym together. So we have to figure out which day. And it, Today, of course, it's the podcast, and tomorrow my wife is going uh, to the gym with a friend, so it's going to be that day. So it's uh, we're still working on uh, making it fit into the calendar. And uh... 
Sounds like you're making some perfectly good excuses there, Waddle. Well yeah, um, <laughs> the, the, the best excuse is coming up, of course, uh, because as I mentioned earlier, I have uh, scheduled an appointment with the doctor to uh, do some uh, minor tube snipping. And then, of course, uh, when you read oh. between, well, not between the lines, but when you read there, you should, do, you should not do any heavy lifting for the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, I'm basically... <laughs> Spent one time in the gym, and then it's not going to happen this week, and then it's going to be two weeks out of the game after that. So, uh, yeah, so it's a very slow start. But <laughs> I've, I've, I've come to the conclusion with the the work that I has today, with a lot of sitting, and then of course the realization of I don't spend a lot of time in the workshop bending my knees. It's very stationary work at a workbench or something so you don't get the workout that you imagine that you're getting and then of course the one to two thirds of that is also editing at the computer yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. yeah i need to take actions not that not that i don't need it for anything else that i have realized that 15 20 30 years down the line i, I still would like to be able to uh just instantly start to run with my kids or join in any activities or something i i remember i've, I've seen a lot of parents uh, at my age and up who like no i can't remember the last time i run or climbed the tree or whatever because my body won't allow it and i like i would like to be able to do stupid shit if i want to yeah. so that's a that's yeah. the game plan <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've never been one for the gym. I, I mean, I, I, I had, I did it the year before I started university because I had a friend at school who thought we should go together, and I did go a couple of times and I was miserable. Uh, but then I've always heard that when you get to a certain age, you really should be take take care of your body. So I, I kind of were mentally prepared that yeah, I should, I should start working out, going to the gym, and when I hurt my back. A couple of months ago, I went to uh, some physical ter therapy, that's called. Uh, and I, I was more or less, yes, this is going to be the push for me to actually start going to the gym. <laughs> I said, to me, yeah, I, I hurt my back. I sit down a lot in the office. I, I know I should be working out, going to the gym. And he said, no, no, you shouldn't do anything you don't want to do. It's, it's going to be fine. <laughs> Okay, sorted. Then I'm not going to go to the gym. So that <laughs> that brought me down to zero again. So yeah, that's as long as I'm pain free, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> and that's the thing, though, and it's hard to compensate for. But I mean, we're still young, and there's plenty of time. So I mean, if I if I come to that situation that this becomes a problem, then I can I'd start specifically working out for that then. But <laughs> that is basically not how you keep like a general good physique going because yeah. when you are, and this is of course sad statistics, but I think it's around the age 25, at least the male body, you have peaked. So after 25, yeah. it starts going down. So every physical activity or workout you do after that you have to increase the workout to keep at the same level because your body is just like all right we have peaked it's uh, all down here it's uh, time to prepare to die basically and <laughs> <laughs> i mean i've passed 40 now and of course uh, i'm closer to 60 than i am 20 and it, it's not going to be easier uh, starting later but of course you you feel young and you can basically do everything still. I mean, your body is functioning and uh, so on. So it's it's very easy to procrastinate and just, oh, I'll, I'll deal with that later. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, it's a tricky one. I um I used to go to the gym a lot when I was young and um, enjoyed it. And then, you know, other things took over. But I've always had a physical job. Yeah. And I think you can go too far the other way. I think you can actually knacker your body as well through doing too much yeah, physical work. Definitely. I, I got out of the band today. I've been done perfectly normal day's work and felt fine while I was doing it. Got out of the van and limped up the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, of course, the combination of being in your 20s and then, of course, uh, 
in school, you had PE classes, which is basically free workout, but you didn't think of it as such because you're just hanging around with your friends and fooling around. And then, of course, you got uh, a part-time job, which was physical. And I remember I could do barely nothing in the winter and put on a couple of pounds. And then in the summer, you, you lost that again just because you were out working. But And I didn't think about it at the time but i remember i was in my tw- 20s but my colleagues were i mean old geezers but thinking back to it they were at the age that i am now and they had been working that job for 20 plus years and they were doing physiotherapy they were regularly seeing their chiropractors. They were getting surgeries done because they have basically done a lot of heavy lifting and not properly. I mean, doing it in a, a gym setting, it is controlled and it's not explosive because you need to get a job done because someone is waiting for you. You just want to get it done with. So if you see all the physical laborers, it, it's a reason why they had earlier retirement in some Uh, factory jobs because you are using your body every day and it is going to be worn down if you don't do it as a a controlled workout routine to just keep everything (laughs) lubricated and in ship shape (laughs) you you can't do it as a controlled workout (laughs) yeah but i mean you can do it the right way and the wrong way yeah yeah Yeah. i just go out to alpha ladder and there's anybody younger around i'll work twice as hard (laughs) (laughs) exactly (laughs) Yeah, that's the I'll show them. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick change of subject. Have you guys ever met a real life YouTuber in real life while going about your just your regular activities? Not as not as a maker meetup or anything like that. Nope. Well, I mean, I've seen some out in the wild, but when you're talking about encounter and actually talking to them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that I know of, but then again, all the people at work are talking to me, or I'm talking, but they they don't know, and I, I don't know. <laughs> I know so exactly, I probably yeah. talked yeah. with. Um, I might even have neighbors who are like big YouTubers within narrow niches, yeah. but you don't know because they're in their basement pulling at body parts <laughs> for money. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that's maybe not a maker then, but then then again, it's a definition, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> so every Tuesday I work at um, a lake complex and I was walking around um, the lake last last week and uh, there's a chap there at the side of the lake filming himself. And I said, hello, are you a YouTuber? He went, I am. I said, I'm a YouTuber too. <laughs> 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 yeah, so he has a, a fishing channel. It's called Catfish Dan. Oh, cool. Yeah. And he uh, travels the UK fishing with his mother, and that's his angle. You know, lots of people, <laughs> lots of people go fishing with their dads, don't they? But he does it with his mum. Yeah. That was a really interesting angle. <laughs> nice guy, anyway. It was just really nice to be, a, a, you know, somebody doing the same silly shit, you know, in a different format as we do in real mm. life. <laughs> I have well, the the one that I've seen that. I probably think is uh might not be a YouTuber, but on social media filming themselves has been in a setting where I've just that's not a maker. So I'm I don't, I'm not interested in talking to that person because they're filming themselves. Uh, Look at me! I'm a twenty year old in front of this uh, building yeah. and uh, making a duck face. I mean that's uh, that's gonna go away real soon. So, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, it, it's real. It's really interesting seeing the rig, because I, I, I've seen a couple of people walking around in the city filming themselves, obviously for some kind of social media, and I don't remember what it was, but there was some Japanese guy, I think, uh, was live streaming in front oh, that's, of uh, like, that... the castle or something like that. <laughs> that was just weird looking at. Okay, yes. 
he actually has some people watching and he's talking very yeah, yeah but that's that's yeah. a, that's the <laughs> specific thing with the japanese they they don't need to be on social media they they have rigs they when they go on holiday and taking pictures they have the equipment <laughs> And I mean, when it comes to photo video equipment, they also the, they also make the equipment. So it only goes. Yeah. I mean, if you if you want the best, you often end up with a, a Japanese brand. So yeah, those um, handheld phone phone holders which track you and the gimbal thing. And yeah, you ha- and, and stay you have, stable. And I see fantastic. And I see a lot of. I mean, I think there's streamers doing that. They have one one camera filming them, and like one f- or like. One phone film, and then one phone that is they keep an eye on the feed, and one phone for so it's like they're carrying Jesus. with them an entire office yeah. on one stick. That's, That's the creator fighter pilot, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly that. I, that being said, be, being an equipment geek, I almost bought a gimbal system, and then I realized, but you're a maker <laughs> that you need your hand for what you do. So you <laughs> you can buy a, a gimbal that is really good and costs a lot of money, but you're just going to duct tape it to your tripod because you need your hands in making. So you're not going to use it. So, all right, I'm not I'm, buying it. Yeah. Yeah, I, really want, I really want one, but I've got no use for one at all. It could be good to have when you have your kids filming you. <laughs> yeah that's true because i tried that uh, at one point because i needed uh, some shots for me and i just gave, gave my kid the phone right here film me when i'm standing next to this and i could not use that footage <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that's a good yeah that's a good thing because now of course uh it, it's it's fun because the kids are realizing that daddy is on the television and Oh, that's cute. That and that's that's not television, television yeah. but yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, humor them. But and then of course the eldest is now like, I would also like to film myself. And now they are starting to use our phones and taking pictures, and it's fun to see them take pictures of basically us. Uh, and of course they they just press and hold the button, so they take a million pictures. So some of them are actually decent. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe that's the future uh, cr- filming crew. So maybe we should start to train them uh, early on. Because I, I saw now the the Garage Avenger went out and said he's looking for some videographer who are interested in some work or collaboration or something. And of course, we have discussed it already. Like having someone like, for instance, Laura Kampf with Felix, just taking the video part and the hassle out of it, and you can actually have someone moving the camera into the work while you're working so you don't have to all right i'll sand this block of wood and i'll sand two seconds and I'll, all right now i need to move the camera because I, I would like to change the camera angle so the the, the shot doesn't be too boring and then you sand for two seconds again and then you move it and then you finally figure out all right now i have enough video i think uh, and now i've finished the piece and then when you are in edit and like God damn it, this is not usable. And I finished a piece, so I can't really go back and sand it <laughs> after a fortnight. So, yeah. Have you ever tried to film anybody while they're making something? No. No. I, I tried to film, I have successfully filmed Michelle for a reel when she was doing the bat storage for Chloe's Challenge. And um, it's, it's a fun experience, but you actually. I have to tell, I had to say, Brian, stop, wait, I need to get this shot. Yeah. So the maker becomes the quicker part of it when you actually, when you're actually doing the filming part. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you see uh, Sila Foxlin's latest video? I think she did with uh, Ruth Amos and, oh, the luthier, uh, Daisy Tempest. Uh, oh, they the did a, a 24 hour build in her workshop making yeah, a ukulele. ukulele. Yeah, yeah, I'm not seeing that. I've seen the no, advert. Yeah, seen that just, for it. just having uh, three makers running around, all, all YouTubers that looked really fun. And I thought, yeah, could we do something like that at her worst place? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be really fun, but it is. Yeah. It is really fun because I remember at Maker Central when we were at the like the the closed uh, party afterwards, and of course you have all these famous YouTubers, and of course you are dipping your toes into the same pond, so so you know 
what goes on behind the scenes and of course they are there and they're also in parallel making content so of course uh, we had a lovely chat with Ali Spagnola but of course uh, you're always thinking about the making part so of course she just instantly switch into working mode for like five minutes and then she was filming something and you you know that all right i'll see that in two days because that is in the narrative that she has on social media with traveling to maker central and so on and i'm yeah. like all right now i have this bit and then she's back at being social and when you have every maker that you basically follow in the same room and they're all like we're here having fun with like-minded people, but they are also very understanding that, all right, I'm just going to do this for two seconds. So it's, it's, it's fun when you have a room full of makers that the dynamic is very much different than if you are in a workshop with someone who's not doing social media on the side. I mean, yeah, it would be awkward exactly. for me to go into a wood shop with someone who is a professional woodworker, but they don't do social media and just, all right, now, now I just film an angle and they'd like, this feels weird and they've never been in front of a camera now it's still weird to see yourself and hear your own voice but I, I don't get like put off anymore if someone just brings up a camera and filming something and you just continue talking as if nothing ever happened so yeah so we should do some uh triple parallel content then in October. That's going to be nice. <laughs> oh, my... we, we each my... try to make our own video at the same time being in each other's way. That could be interesting. It might be a little bit uh, too late for October, you know, because I've already booked my time there, but uh, maybe you could have an extra day over in England when you come over. Yeah, no, no, a time crunch is good for the narrative. <laughs> we have yeah. three hours to finish this build. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've realized, and also talking with, with Rasmus, I mean, I realized you, you, you didn't plan enough time over here. So, uh, but then again, I think Walsh Thomas is also thinking about uh, making some uh, happening in the woods, some uh, maker gathering, and so on. So, uh, yeah. uh, it's, at some point, uh, at least, I'm going to venture over to the. The great unknown on the other side of the pond. The small <laughs> pond, not the big one, obviously, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny if it ever happens, won't it? Yeah. It sounded cynical when I said that. I didn't mean it. To <laughs> <laughs> it sounded really cynical. I think yeah. we're getting tired and cynical. We, <laughs> we should wrap this up. Yeah. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Getting really good at this wrapping things up. That's brilliant. <laughs> Professionals. Yeah, yeah, we have like seven minutes left on the recording, so it felt good. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so. <laughs> and you have a lot to edit. A lot to edit, and of course, but nah, we're professional. We should do radio. I think that's the, the next logical step for us. So when do we start uh, hammering the doors of various uh, syndicates? Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, Joe Rogan is getting kind of dated i mean they, they need some new fresh blood <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you're the spitting image of i'm the next Eurogan. <laughs> no <laughs> Bigger, I, it's, it's, it's more it's more like pe people are ready for something is. completely different and then it's yeah. like <laughs> a palate cleanser yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's an easier sell i think <laughs> and again a palate cleanser that that's the in-between thing bef before the next and so no yeah <laughs> Ah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Get someone else to be that. All right. So then the title is fixed then. The palate cleanser. Yeah, all right. All right. I think uh, I think that's a good wrap. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good thing for an episode for a maker podcast, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs>